Okay, so we're looking at our study of people using two different keyboards. Now they use one or the other, the iPhone keyboard or the Galaxy keyboard, in three different postures, and they do all three postures, sitting, standing, and walking, which we fully counterbalanced. We had the parametric analysis was a, a factorial ANOVA, uh, a mixed factorial ANOVA, because we have a between and within subjects factor. And uh, we saw this, this interaction plot here, and we found that we have differences at each of the, the, two compar the, the two keyboards in each of the postures were different. How do we do this with a non-parametric procedure? Well, let's look at the error rate data. Errors almost invariably do not conform to the assumptions that we discussed for ANOVA. Um, they, they, they are cut off at zero. They can't sort of be less than zero, obviously. Uh, they often are kind of random in their distribution. Uh, errors just tend to not uh, sort of allow themselves to be analyzed easily with parametric procedures. So we can use a non-parametric procedure on our error rate column. And we'll do that with an approach called the aligned rank transform procedure. It's important to note that with non-parametric analyses, interaction effects are not usually available in the common analyses. Friedman tests that we've looked at, Wilcox and Sine rank tests, uh, Kruskal-Wallis tests, and Mann-Whitney tests, they're all one-way tests. They're, they're just single factor tests. Uh, so if we want the possibility of analyzing interactions and uh, handling those the right way, one of the options available to us is called the aligned rank transform. I won't go into great depth about how this works, but it does operate on ranks, just like uh, the other uh, non-parametric tests we've seen, but it operates on something called aligned ranks, where the data is aligned before being ranked. And what aligned means is that only the effect of interest is left in the data because we subtract out values from it that remove the possibility of other effects. So for example, if we're just looking at a main effective keyboard, we align the data to that by subtracting out possible estimated effects of posture. If we want to look just at the interaction between keyboard and posture, we subtract out estimated values from each data point that would relate to the main effects of keyboard and posture. So we just leave one effect behind, and that's called the alignment process. You're welcome to look that up more online. So we'll do our usual approach of uh, exploring the data first. So here we have um, the different uh, means and medians for the error rates uh, of the, the, in the different conditions. Uh, and here we have our summary that gives us uh, means and standard deviations of the same. Obviously, these are somewhat easier to interpret with a box plot, so we'll, we'll work our way there. Let's get a sense first of the shape of the data. And we can see that uh, with the iPhone sitting condition, the standing condition, the walking condition, and then with the Galaxy sitting, standing, and walking. Very different shapes of, of the data, obviously. Uh, a box plot helps us see that it looks, uh, at first glance, that while sitting, the errors, these two plots are, are lower, the error rate's lower. That makes sense. And then when we stand up, the error rate goes up a bit with both keyboards. And then when we're walking, the error rate goes up even more, but seemingly differentially between the two keyboards, where these stay more the same. So that might suggest we have an interaction effect. And the best way to check that is an interaction plot. And here we have a obviously very interesting result. It looks like when walking, the Galaxy keyboard, for whatever reason, is more error prone than the iPhone keyboard, uh, which is um, which obviously would be a very interesting finding and is completely fictitious to this example. So let's go ahead and look at the error rate um, result. So we load a library called the RTool library, and that gives us the aligned rank transform. And we build a model, as we've done before, using the art command. We formulate our uh, model, like we've, we've seen, where we have our Y on the left, keyboard by posture is our study, and we add this term uh, in, in parentheses, one with a vertical bar and subject. Um, this is because the aligned rank transform, the art procedure, under the hood here is using a linear mixed model. We're not going to discuss that right now. That'll be a topic later in the course. Uh, but that's what that means, and that's what's going on under the hood. Um, this notation uh, is part of what tells it that subject is a, uh, a random effect. Again, we'll discuss that later. But also helps it know that subject is what to use to correlate data across rows in our table. 
So let's go ahead and build that, and then we'll report the ANOVA result. Now remember, even though this is an ANOVA, it is a non-parametric result because the ART procedure used the aligned rank transform uh, on all of the data to build that model. So that's what allows us to see uh, interactions in an F test is how we'd report this, just like you've seen before. Uh, but, uh, but it's really a non-parametric result. Okay, so with this, we see that we have uh, our F statistics for keyboard uh, posture and the interaction, uh, the degrees of freedom in the numerator, as you've seen before, and then the residual or denominator degrees of freedom. And we see that all three results are statistically significant. What that means is for all three main effects and the, or two main effects in the interaction, we have statistically significant results. It seems there's a main effect of keyboard, a main effect of posture, and we can tell from just looking at the graph, obviously a, main, uh, a significant interaction. We can, uh, just for, for fun here, test um, the normality of the residuals that the model provides. Remember that one of the ANOVA assumptions is normality, and specifically the normality of the, the residuals, which are the difference in the observations from the model predictions. Uh, so we'll use our Shapiro-Wilk test, and even though this is a non-parametric test, we're ultimately still doing an ANOVA, and so it would be nice to see that the residuals comply uh, with normality. The Shapiro-Wilk test is non-significant, telling us that we don't have a significant departure from normality, so that's nice to see, and we can graph the residuals on a QQ plot as we've done in the past and see that the data points do seem to fall roughly equal to uh, uh, or random around the, the normal uh, line, which is the, the, the normal distribution line. So that's good. So it seems that we're conforming to the assumptions there of ANOVA, which can make us proceed with confidence. So given the overall significant interaction effects and main effects here, we can uh, look a little bit further into pairwise comparisons. Where do the differences lie? One thing we might notice is in the sitting situation and the standing situation, things between the keyboards don't seem to be all that different. But in the walking situation, we see that they are quite different. So that's going to be interesting for us to see. So we'll have our um, interaction plot there for us, and we can conduct uh, pairwise tests among levels uh, first of keyboard. And so the LS means with the art LM command will give us that for keyboard. And we can see that the results here uh, are in contrasts where we see the Galaxy and the iPhone comparison. So it's, it's a, a, a comparison there, and we can see a, a, that it's a t-test uh, between those. Um, we can also check uh, the pairwise. So, so we should say with the, the keyboard, this is equivalent to the main effect because there are only two levels of keyboard. We just included that kind of for completeness. If we want to do com the, the pairwise comparisons among the levels of posture, we can um, do that. And in the contrast table, we see sitting versus standing, sitting versus walking, and standing versus walking. And they're all significant. So imagine a line drawn between these lines for that posture effect. So it would be kind of moving from sitting to standing and then going up between them in the middle for walking. Since they're not horizontal, there's, there's clearly effects here of posture overall. Now, that approach to contrast testing that we've just done can't be used for the interaction. So I have a commented outline here saying, don't do this, uh, where we'd specify the interaction directly and do a, a pairwise comparison across factors. The reason we can't do this it, with the ART approach, the aligned rank transform approach, is that uh, we, we, we can't compare pairwise values across factors uh, directly. And that gets to uh, some very deep uh, statistical um, research that we've done looking into that. Uh, and you're welcome to, to look that up. If you look up the vignette, which is an, an R command for bringing up more information beyond just the help page, look up the vignette for art contrasts. You'll be able to read further. The good news is there's a, 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 another way to do contrasts that results in um, something called uh, interaction contrasts. And it's looking at the difference of differences. Uh, and that is 
usable with the art approach. And we get that from the FIA library, so we'll load that. There's some notes here explaining how to interpret these things. Um, so I'll go ahead and run test interactions uh, with the keyboard by posture interaction, and we'll adjust these pairwise comparisons as usual, and then we'll interpret this output together. So what we see in this table is not just uh, the usual uh, comparison of levels. We see Galaxy iPhone on the left, and then a, a colon, and then sit, stand, sit, walk, and stand, walk uh, on the right. Well, what does that mean? So let's look at our comment here. In the output, AB colon CD is interpreted as a difference of differences. In other words, the difference between A and B given C and the difference of A and B given D. So in other words, is the difference between A and B significantly different in condition C from condition D? So that'd be kind of the general interpretation. So let's apply that here. So we're saying that um, is the Galaxy versus the iPhone um, given the sitting posture, so given the sitting posture, the Galaxy versus the iPhone, is that difference significantly different from the Galaxy versus the iPhone in the standing situation. So their difference here. And that is not statistically significant with a chi-squared test. And so that's, a, that's saying that the difference we see here, which is obviously very minimal between the keyboards, and the difference we see here, which is only slightly bigger, those differences are, are really not uh, significantly different. Uh, but when we compare the sitting situation of keyboards to walking, we can see this is significantly different as, the, as a difference from this difference. And the same when we compare the difference here in standing to the difference in walking. So that's how we have to interpret contrast tests in the aligned rank transform situation. Um, so now we've uh, analyzed this data in two different ways. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our analysis table and see where this has brought us. OK, so we've just completed our analysis of our mobile text entry data with uh, smartphone keyboards, the iPhone keyboard and the Samsung Galaxy keyboard, and also in three different postures, sitting, standing, and walking. So we looked at a factorial ANOVA, in our case a mixed design with a between and within subjects factor. Um, so let's see the red text in our table here and notice that it's the first time we've had more than one factor. And we see that in our left column. We had also, we had factors with more than two levels. So we had a posture uh, within subjects or repeated measures factor that had three levels, sitting, standing, and walking. We had a between subjects factor, and we also had a within subjects factor. So we have some uh, highlighted analyses in two different rows. We could have a purely between subjects factorial ANOVA with all between subjects factors. We could also have a purely within subjects ANOVA with all within subjects factors. And the analysis is very much like what we've just carried out. We did a mixed design analysis so we could see how to handle both between and within subjects factors. So for our parametric tests, we've covered factorial ANOVAs. And because we had a within subjects factor, we've actually covered factorial repeated measures ANOVAs as well. These are all linear models. And in fact, everything in the parametric test column that we've covered so far is a linear model, sometimes abbreviated LM. The linear model actually generalizes, and we can see over in the non-parametric column, a generalized linear model. We'll get to that next. In the non-parametric test column, we've done the aligned rank transform, and that also handled both between and within subjects factors and their interactions. And so that's why we've, we've highlighted those analyses there. Let's take a look at what it means to generalize the linear model. And so we'll move now to generalized linear models, after which we'll look at mixed models and talk about what that means uh, with linear mixed models and then their generalization to generalized linear mixed models. But first, let's look at generalized linear models. We'll do that next.